Hey guys, this is going to be the next video in my Nomad Sculpt series for creating flexi creatures specifically. And today I'm going to go over how I do ball joints, which for me personally was the hardest type of joint to figure out when doing my models. So I'm going to hopefully make it a little bit easier for y'all so y'all have less trial and error than I did and show you a couple of different ways of how I do them. Hopefully it helps. Bye. So like we did with our other joints, we're going to start with our thicker body segment so we have more space to cut out from. Then we're going to add our ball for our ball joint. And then we're going to add a cylinder for the arm. This arm is going to build up from our build plate at a nice angle so that we're not having any weird overhangs printing in thin air. I'm going to move a little bit of the body out to cover that ball joint better so that it is fully encased and it's not going to fall out. And then you saw me a second ago duplicate that ball, expanded it, so we're going to make a cavity with that later. And then here, importantly, you're going to cut off that side of that ball joint coming up from the arm so it lines up with that arm. That is going to make sure that our ball is not printing in midair and causing issues for us. And then we're going to, you see me cut out that cavity for the ball joint to move around in. The other way I do ball joints is by printing them off the build plate. You see I print from the bottom, cut off that ball joint, and then we're going to expand that again make that cavity again, cut off the bottom of our print. So then it can print straight from the build plate, same principles, creating that cavity so it can move around. So these are two different ways that I will do those ball joints and then I'll show you how these look in a model and what the difference is. So this is actually my first ever flexi model right here, which I decided to take on ball joints of all things, of all the other flexi joints that I could have picked. And I fought with these for weeks and weeks and weeks because I was determined I wanted the wings to be able to sit up and pose like that and to be able to lay flat. So I finally figured it out with that slicing off the top bottom part. And so, but you can see how rigid that movement is. It only really goes this way. It doesn't do a lot of this, which I improved upon with my meow. And so she has more movement up and down. So it gives it a more natural feel and flop when I'm handling her. And she still has that full range of motion prints like that, where you can see the arm going up into the socket. And my feather dragon is that second type of ball joint that I told y'all about, where it's coming straight up from the print bed, supported like that. And then you can still get all that nice movement so she can pose her wings up like this, lay flat. And the reason that I chose this open bottom type of wing for her is because I specifically wanted, when you pick her up, I wanted her wings to be able to flop all the way down like that and be super floppy. And she's a shorter model. She's not as tall as this baby. So she has less wiggle room to put her joints up in the shoulders because you see, I don't like how much bulk there is on this guy. So made her a little sleeker made her a little floppier and so yeah two different types two different ways to do these ball joints hopefully y'all have to wrestle with them less than I did now and you these can help you understand a little bit of how to do that so this is going to be my longest one yet but hopefully it was helpful and I will talk to y'all later